So today I want to talk about this amazing guitar that I've got. It's a really beautiful piece of equipment. I've had it a while and honestly I haven't played it enough to do it justice. And there's a reason for that. But years ago I went into Guitar Center I saw this hanging on the wall and visually it just grabbed my attention and I had to play it. I had to take it down off the wall, play it, try it out. I like the sound of it. But it's a little bit high pricey and I decided I maybe didn't need an extra guitar at the time. But over the ensuing days I just kept thinking about it and I read a little bit about it online, I looked it up and I saw quite a few great guitarists use it so I felt it had a bit of credibility and I just couldn't stop thinking about it. So one day I called the guitar store to see if they still had it in stock and as soon as I picked up the phone and dialed the number and was waiting for someone to pick it up, in those few short moments I got a sense of panic that maybe the thing's gone, oh my god, what am I going to do if it's been sold? Which is ridiculous because you can always find the thing somewhere else. But just that little emotional reaction showed me that I had already formed an attachment to it. So I knew I was in trouble and I had to go and buy the thing. So having bought it and played it, I brought it to some of my singer-songwriter solo gigs and I just found that in wailing away with the chords for some of those heavier indie rock songs, that I was getting a, too much of a high-end sound. It could have been the PA or the app I was playing through. Who knows what it was. But that particular night, I just got a bad feeling and I reverted back to my Stratocaster, which is my go-to guitar. Now that we all have a little more time at home recently, with everybody being kind of cooped up in quarantine given the global situation, it's given me an opportunity just to sit here and play, even without plugging it in, or with plugging it into my Vox amp, which I retrieved from my practice space for the last couple of months, and just get a sense of how the thing sounds and get reacquainted with it. And I'm going to demo how it sounds. But just for a little bit of history on, on why this is such a really beautiful guitar, this is a Duesenberg. They were first made in Germany in 1986. So they've been around a little while, making guitars for a little while. They started as a single person operation. I think they have about 30 people working for them now. Since 2004, they have an operation in California too. So they're also making guitars in the United States. The name Duesenberg has been synonymous with grace and beauty and high-end luxury and excellent craftsmanship for more than a hundred years now at this point. The reason being, a luxury racing car company called Duesenberg was founded in St. Paul, Minneapolis in 1913. And they continued to make cars all the way up until 1937 when the Great Depression kind of put an end to that for them when the demand for luxury cars fell. But if you look at the models that were made, if you look at the kinds of cars and the designs that came out while they were in business, you really do see some beautiful designs, some examples of, of American ingenuity, of just beautiful, sleek, imagination. So while the Duesenberg guitar is not necessarily linked with the Duesenberg racing cars and luxury automobiles of the 1910s, 20s and 30s, at the same time there's perhaps a symbolic lineage there. Duesenberg as a guitar, they have a particular design feel to them. You'll notice that there's a lot of art deco sensibilities going on and if you read about them online and you look at their website they claim that art deco is a central design element and you can see that in the kind of stepped motif that appears everywhere from the pick guard to the headstock to the D brand design even to the tuning heads it appears all over the guitar even the little Duesenberg logo that screwed onto the headstock you could almost see that as a frontispiece for some 1920s New York skyscraper. And the other element that they talk about is that they're really fascinated by the colors and geometrics and shapes of the 1940s and 50s as well. And you can see the 1950s color motif, at least I feel like I can, in that kind of baby blue color. They call this Narvik blue, but for me, the color just jumped off the shelf. It really just shouted, Ford Mustang 1966 convertible, white wall tires, and you know that's a favorite car of mine, and for me it's a symbol of some of the high watermarks of American design. Just creativity married with beauty, grace, sleek, it's cool. They just don't make cars like that anymore, and I'm glad they make guitars like this. So you've got the Art Deco, the 40s and the 50s, and all those design elements baked into this beautiful guitar. Everything from the, the tone knobs to the P 
pickup selector with again the three step motifs on those to the tremolo bar. There's just beauty and deliberateness and intelligence of design in every single element of the guitar. This is a semi hollow body. It has a sound hole, so it has a kind of a combination of solid body and semi body, which gives it a particular tone. And then for the pickups, every piece of equipment on the guitar is manufactured specifically by and for Duesenberg. So the pickups are their own, what they call a grand vintage humbucker at the bridge, and then what they refer to as a warm, creamy, Domino P90 single coil and you have a pickup selector that can go between those three so you can select one or the other or you can combine them for an extra special tone that eliminates some of the some of the frequencies. It's fairly heavy it has a certain heft to it and it may look kind of like a 1950s rock guitar. It might look kind of a little bit Johnny B. Good. It might also look a little bit jazz guitar. It definitely has some of those elements to it and Duesenbergs have been played by a lot of guitarists, everybody from Dylan to Paul McCartney to Ron Wood to Keith Richards, Pearl Jam, Chris Cornell, Slash, I believe, has played one, Elvis Costello, The Eagles, John Mayer, and, and Johnny Depp as well, apparently. So, with that, I'm going to plug it in and let's just have a listen to it. So, here we have the Duesenberg. I got this plugged into my Vox amp. I'm going to use a Hall of Fame reverb pedal. Got to check it on the rap distortion and use a little tremolo on the amp, and that's pretty much it. A lot of what I'm doing here is, is just clean tone. A humbucker at the bridge and a single coil here closer to the neck. You have a pickup selector that allows you to select one or the other or a mix of both. You have two control knobs here one is volume, and the other is tone. So the bridge pickup humbucker and that's quite a nice tone very trebly at the high end you bring it all the way in on the tone knob and it really does muffle it a lot so it's not entirely clean tone but if you bring that into midway then and see a mix of bass and treble it's just what a sweet tone see what the blend is like. That's a pretty nice blend. 
I'm gonna add a little reverb to that, just to the clean tone. I kind of prefer the neck pickup, to be honest. sound to it. I'm not so sure it's for some of my heavier indie rock where I'm really just not even thinking about necessarily grace and texture. I'm just slamming away. I think it does want to be played a little bit more beautifully than that and with a little more subtlety than that. <laughs>
texture and the feel of it, but for a singer songwriter kind of playing those Buffalo Tom Indies 90 songs, it just has such a beautiful clean tone for it. Put a little extra veneer of effects on it and you can't go wrong. The thing just looks visually stunning and beautiful. So that's my Duesenberg. I've been playing with it recently. I just felt like of all the gear that I tend to talk about here, this thing probably deserves a little bit of expose. I've got some other awesome guitars I'd love to talk about too. I have a, a 1967 Fender Jaguar and those things can be unpredictable, but the one I've got sounds really amazing. Thanks for watching. I hope you like the gear that I talk about. While you're on the channel, definitely check out some of the music that's on there too. I'm a singer-songwriter. I've got several albums out. You can find them on my Bandcamp page. You can find them on YouTube. You can find them on iTunes, Amazon, all the usual digital outlets. Feel free to click on the subscribe button and click that little bell icon so that you get notified when I post new content. And thanks so much for watching.